Look at these goats. <laughs> Scoop. And there he goes. Videos like these have millions of views, and some of them become memes. Maybe you even send some out to your friends. Look, it's you when it's time to pay the rent. <laughs> But the goats themselves don't have so much fun. Nature played an evil, evil joke on them because it gave them a very strange feature. It becomes completely still when frightened. Imagine what would happen if they're next to a cliff when thunder rumbles. They all just fall. Is that even a superpower? But goats didn't choose it, just like ants didn't choose blindness. In order not to lose their way, they secrete special pheromones and follow each other. But sometimes an unexpected failure occurs in the ant's algorithm, and the insects begin to walk in circles. More and more ants join the others. It looks like a mosh pit, only without the music. Only ants keep running until they fall dead. The circle rotates until the participants are completely exhausted, and only then the ants can continue on their way, leaving behind hordes of dead. It can last for hours, or even days, until someone suddenly comes to their senses and takes away the surviving brothers. William Beebe first described this strange phenomenon in the 1920s. He found an ant mill with a circle of about 370 meters. For comparison, the famous Devil's Tower is about 100 meters lower. Can you imagine? Imagine the size? Not only ants have such problems, for example, fish form such circles too, but tangled rats look much worse. Look at this photo. It looks like some sort of modern art or props for a horror movie, but no, these are real rats that have become tangled by their tails and starved to death. A horrible and ridiculous death. This phenomenon was first discovered in 1564 and named Rat King. Yeah, the one from the Nutcracker. According to the hypothesis, rats gather in the king form when their flexible tails are glued together with skin fat, excrement, and food remains. This mixture acts as a glue and can harden during sleep, especially during the cold season. Once the rats realize they're trapped, they start to fight and the knot tightens even harder. In the end, the animals die. So far, people haven't been able to find a single living rat king, and this phenomenon is very rare. Previously, rats who died such a terrible death were considered a very bad sign. It's no wonder, because where the rats are, there are diseases. This is not usually said about spiders. Spiders are quite useful, guys, although people don't particularly like them. This insect is really unlucky. It had been a prisoner for 20 million years. Once the spider got into a drop of resin and was trapped in it forever. Just like this dog. Well, of course, it's not 20 million years old or even a million, only about 20. And the poor animal was stuck not in resin, but in a whole tree. Just imagine how surprised were the people who discovered that. Lumberjacks working in southern Georgia in the 1980s cut down a tree and loaded it into a truck. Then one of the group members accidentally looked into the hollow trunk from the inside. Perfectly mummified dog remains were looking at him. Its teeth were still bare. The experts who examined the remains concluded that the dog most likely chased a squirrel in the 1960s and got stuck in the trunk of a tree. The animal climbed too high, couldn't turn around, and died. But instead of becoming food for other forest dwellers, the dog turned into a mummy. The wood of the chestnut tree in which it got stuck prevented decay. The dry environment inside the trunk protected from the elements and sucked moisture out of the body. And this is a unique case. Usually, any dead body becomes the victim of insects, especially in the forest. Scientists even use their greediness to clean the skeletons. Some beetles can even eat out a body of a deer. Poor guy. It's not only stuck in a fissure, but it also became food. Now, let's not deny, though, the obvious fact. The beetles did a great job. Look at that. The bones are perfectly clean. However, a deer may well be given a second life. Not literally, of course, no necromancy, but at least one person would gladly include the poor deer in his collection. Well, partially. Jim Phillips has more than 16,000 deer, elk antlers, and antelope horns, and he just casually found all elements of his collection. It took, however, more than 60 years. Well, how many horns did you find? Exactly. This man is really good at searching. But let's leave people with their strange hobbies and return to animals with their strange habits. One of them is self-cannibalism. Yeah, you got that right. Some animals literally devour themselves. Surely you've seen somewhere the stories about snakes which are so carried away by their lunch that they don't notice when the victim ends and their tail begins? In reality, everything is a little different. A snake can really start to eat itself, but only if it takes the movement of its tail for the movement of prey. Honestly, we don't know which of these options looks more ridiculous. If snakes could feel awkward, they'd be shocked by themselves.
But the situation with this male hummingbird isn't funny at all. He's on the verge of starving to death. The metabolism of these tiny birds is incredibly fast. It takes just two hours without nectar to kill a hummingbird. Some of them have to collect food from 2,000 flowers every day just to survive. Now, the life of a bird doesn't seem so free, right? And metabolism is not the only problem. The most ordinary rain can turn into bombing for the hummingbird. It's impossible not only to eat, but even to fly under such conditions, and precious time is spent. But let's imagine that the hummingbird male is all right. We can't say the same about this moose, because it's become a zombie. Not like in a movie, of course, it doesn't wander around the forest looking for brains of other moose, but its own brains are very bad. Brainworm. It's a classic brainworm symptom right there. Such parasites are carried by white-tailed deer, and they don't suffer much from this fact. But as soon as the brain worm is in the moose's body, it rushes, yes, right to the brain. The worm tunnels directly into the head of the unfortunate animal, causing a lot of neurological damage. In fact, the moose becomes a walking zombie just by catching the parasite, and then it dies. Terrible death for any living creature. Of course, all these features of animals, their weak and strong points, don't appear by accident. It's worth saying thank you to evolution, or on the contrary, shout something foul at it. And although usually changes take place over thousands or millions of years, sometimes evolution makes a leap. No, no, we're not talking about X-Men, we're talking about elephants. Modern elephants wear tusks for a hell of a long time. Before that, mammoths wore tusks. So nature knows for sure that these huge animals need them. Huge tusks are one of their most recognizable features, and one of the main reasons why people are pushing elephants to extinction. In the 16th century, 26 million elephants roamed the African continent. Today, there are less than 500,000. By the 1970s and 1980s, poaching had reached a critical level. That's because, for a long time, people simply didn't think that killing animals was a bad thing. For example, everyone knows Theodore Roosevelt, 26th President of the United States, during a safari, shot 512 different living creatures. Among them were also elephants. Animals died not for fun, but to be exhibited in museums and so that scientists could study them. But really? 512? Seriously, Teddy. It seems to be too much. What's to say about the elephants that still suffer from poachers? Ivory is a luxury item in the Asian market. The bigger the tusks, the more money poachers can get from selling them. More than $1,000 per kilo. Tusks are used to create works of art, jewelry. Once they were even used as a material for piano keys. Unfortunately, all this puts elephants at risk, and animal rights activists can't protect them. And at this point, evolution came to the aid. In recent decades, several African parks have seen an increase in the number of elephants born without tusks. It's easy to explain. The victims of poachers are individuals with large tusks, which means that only those who are not of interest to the criminals can have babies. Pretty logical, right? Yes, human activity simply cannot be ignored. Even if you're some tiny animal and you have your own animal problems, you probably have heard about the wall between the United States and Mexico. It should be designed to separate people and countries from each other. But how about animals? The border region is home to an incredible number of different species. There are reptiles, amphibians, mammals, and all of them are not delighted with the construction of the wall, especially representatives of the rare and endangered species. The wall will change their range, greatly reducing the area in which the animals can live. It'll not only cause discomfort, it could really threaten life. The animals will be deprived of some habitats, will not be able to go out to the watering hole or to escape from a fire. All they can do to resist fire is run away. But how to escape it when there's a huge wall in your way? Even a midget owl is in danger because it flies low above the ground. By the way, not only the animals will suffer, because of limited migration, even plants and insects will be badly affected. Of course, a secure border is important, but is it worth the suffering of the other inhabitants of this planet? Write your opinion in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it. We'll see you later.